Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Tea Time Tales, the home of cozy, bite-sized short stories, perfect for listening on your break, before going to sleep, or even while you're just enjoying a fresh cup of tea. In today's episode, we're going to meet Violet, who stumbles upon something seemingly very unbelievable in her backyard. I wonder what it is. So get your tea, settle in, and let's begin. Sometimes we wish for magic in our lives. We wish that magic really existed. That it could help us with our day-to-day troubles, or that it could just whisk us away to some faraway unknown land. We wish that we might be able to actually stumble into another world in the back of our closet, or that a letter might show up on our doorstep telling us that we must go at once to attend a magical school for witches and wizards. But of course, we are often told that none of these things are real, that they are merely works of fiction, that these things are just stories that we tell so that we can feed our imagination and so that we can have good dreams when we close our eyes. And that is exactly what Violet thought as well. She grew up with all of the books about fantasy and magic and mystical worlds one could ever dream of. But even she knew, just like anybody else, that as much as she wished it to be true, it was all make-believe. That was until one day she discovered the secret in her backyard. Violet never thought much of her backyard. It never seemed like anything special. It was a decent size, but... Mostly empty and unkempt, her mother and father were never much for gardening. Her mother, on occasion, tried her hand at growing some of her own vegetables, but eventually she'd forget to keep up with them and they would wither away. The most interesting part of the yard was the old oak tree at the far end. There was a time when Violet had enjoyed climbing the trees. When she reached the top, she could see out to the rest of the houses in the neighborhood and she would often make up stories for the people that she'd watched pass by. But now Violet was older, and she didn't spend much of her time climbing trees. Nowadays, she was happy if she was able to find some time to read in the comfort of her room in between all of the studying that she was doing, and while trying to tune out the screaming and shouting of her brothers and parents. One particularly rainy day, Violet's brothers were playing pirates in the room next to hers, and apparently that meant yelling at the top of their lungs. Meanwhile, their mother was shouting from downstairs upwards, asking the boys to quiet down, but to absolutely no avail. After unsuccessfully trying to drown out all of the screaming and shouting for over an hour, Violet slammed her book down on her bed and angrily went downstairs. Her intention was to make herself a cup of tea to soothe the irritation and all. But when she stood at the counter, waiting for the kettle to come to a boil, movement caught her attention from the corner of her eyes. She turned her attention towards the garden. All she could see was rain falling down heavily and the branches of the trees struggling against the wind. Hmm. Must be nothing. She shrugged and was about to turn her attention back to the kettle when she saw something again. But what, what could that have been? Violet couldn't make out the shape of it, even as she approached the glass doors to the yard. All she could see was strange, colorful glows flickering in the rain, as if someone had let loose a kaleidoscope. She shook her head. Snap out of it. It's clearly just a trick of the light. But over time, it got increasingly difficult to convince herself that that was really the case. Over the next few weeks, every time the violet passed by the window of the yard, she saw the strange glow. Eventually, even she had to admit that she could no longer blame it on the rain or the sunshine or specks of pollen floating in the air. One sunny spring day, Violet's curiosity finally got the better of her. And so, she ventured out to the tree where the strange glow would often be seen floating. On first glance, Violet thought that she had really let herself be misled by absolutely nothing. There didn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary with the tree. The branches didn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary either. Its leaves were a beautiful, vibrant green in the spring air. Ah. Violet was just turning to leave when that glow, it was back. 
she whipped around and spotted the glow floating gently just near the base of the tree. She crouched down to try to get a closer look at it when suddenly the glow disappeared into the tree itself. Huh? Violet tilted her head to the side. At the base of the tree, she noticed that there was a hollow opening. The opening that seemed to be just large enough to fit through. How long has this been here? She asked herself out loud. And how had she never noticed this? This tree had been here all throughout her childhood, and yet this hollow hole seemed to have completely slipped her attention. Ah, maybe it was just a burrow made by some rabbits or moles. It wasn't that uncommon that the neighbors would find them in their backyard. They would certainly complain about it when they did. But as Violet peered inside the hollow of the tree, she noticed the glow of the flickering light going in deeper and deeper. What she saw inside as the light moved told her instincts that this was no animal burrow. Violet pondered her next move. Ugh, it seemed ridiculous. She glanced back at the house. Then again, it was a rare day when she was home alone, so no one would come looking for her or disturb her. All right, she said as she braced herself. Time to be my very own Alice in Wonderland, I guess. Before she could second-guess herself, Violet was pushing through the opening of the tree and heading down the rabbit hole. Except, as her instincts expected, this was no rabbit hole. As soon as she was completely through and inside the tree, the space around her opened up completely. It took a few moments for her eyes to adjust to the light, but once they did, her mouth opened in a gasp. Has this always been here? She asked, her voice echoing along the ground walls around her. She looked forward, a long tunnel stretched out before her. She walked slowly and followed the tunnel, and as she did so, there were increasingly more spots of moss, leaves, and various flowers along the ground at the sides of the path. As she ventured deeper, more and more of the strange floating lights appeared, and they seemed to dance around her head as she walked. What is this place? If Violet thought she was bewildered before, it was nothing compared to how she felt when she got to the end of the tunnel. As she neared, she could hear the faint sounds of flowing water, and the smell of earth and moss became even stronger. She turned the bend in the tunnel and found herself at an open clearing. A true, unbelievable oasis stood before her. The earth opened up astonishingly large. It was as if Violet had stumbled upon a completely new world down here beneath the ground. In front of her was a pool of clear, fresh water. Surrounding the pool were rocks larger than her, covered in moss at the top, and algae where it met the water. The water trickled down from the top of the ground above her, flowing gently down the rocks and into the pool. Around the pool and the rocks were unbelievably more trees there were small gaps in the ground above her head that allowed for small trickles of sunlight to creep in and dance on top of the water how is this even possible violet breathed she walked slowly up to the water her hands gently brushing the tops of the colorful flowers that stood at the base of the trees as she walked floating lights were now abundant here all dancing in the streams of sunlight and above the water. Violet sat down at the top of one of the rocks and found herself instantly calm. Even though she could not make the slightest sense of it all, it somehow didn't seem to matter to her. As she sat there, the trickling of the water and even the sounds of the birds chirping from the ground above her, Violet felt her whole body come at ease. It was a feeling she did not often experience as of late. With the chaos that had been constantly happening at home, especially since the boys got old enough to find their own voices, they had been doing nothing but shouting and yelling when they were home. Her parents then shouted at them to quiet down, but that rarely did anything to help. And then, sometimes due to the frustration, they would then start shouting at each other. So, with all of that combined, Peace is difficult to find in Violet's home. 
Now, though, she let out a contented sigh. Here, there were no brothers, no parents, and best of all, no loud noises. Oh, all that's missing right now is a good book, and this would be absolutely perfect, Violet said. As soon as those words left her mouth, there was a small shoo sound beside her. Violet looked down and saw a book laying on the rock. She looked around curiously. How did... No, surely I would have noticed if someone else had come down here, too. She picked up the book, turned it around, and saw the words, The Secret Garden. Violet smiled. I guess this place really is like my own secret garden. And I never knew it was here. Unbelievable. When she opened it to the first page, instantly she recognized this was her copy of the book. It had her name inscribed and all of her annotations. How on earth? Violet gasped. There was certainly more going on here than she was ever going to be able to comprehend. And anyone else, for that matter, if she ever decided to tell anyone. Somehow, though, Violet didn't want to understand. And she certainly didn't want to tell anyone. Maybe it was all her years of growing up with stories, fantasy, and magic that made it so that she simply wanted to believe in it and not let sense ruin it. Or maybe it was simply because she was so desperate to have a space of her own, her own little escape, that quite frankly, she didn't need any rhyme or reason to understand how this was possible. Either way, from that day on, the world inside the tree became Violet's personal oasis. And whether it was another rare day at home, or if she simply told her parents that she was going to spend the day at the library, Violet would venture down in through the hollow of the tree and spend hours there, either reading or listening to the sound of nature around her. And thanks to the inexplicable magic of the oasis, if she ever needed anything, a cup of tea or a blanket, the oasis was always ready and willing to provide for her. I would certainly like to be able to stumble upon something as magical as that oasis. What about you? Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of Tea Time Tales. I look forward to seeing you again here next time.